Welcome to part three of my uh, battery state of charge wireless uh, solution for networks um, in using the uh, Gentech VAT1300. Um, in part one, I went over the basic hardware configurations and what the goal was. Um, basically, it was to take um, these Gentech uh, battery monitors or Coulomb counters, whatever you want to call them, and um, be able to come up with my own solution um, to wirelessly connect in and log data um, to monitor the state of charge uh, off my batteries, specifically my boat, but it could be used, you know, on any any battery system, um, any chemistry um, for solar charging or any other application. So in part three here, I'm I'm going to cover uh, software. So um, what I've done is gone in with the logic analyzer and reverse engineered um, the protocol that goes in between the, the uh, Gentech controller and the uh, base shunt unit and basically um, cooked my own solution to be able to put a radio module onto our Arduinos. So right now if the software supports an Arduino Uno or a uh, ESP32, but it could probably be easily configured to work with pretty much any Arduino. Um, encourage if somebody was going out and buying hardware to lean towards the ESP32, just because um, that's gonna give you the most capabilities in the end, as far as um, it's got network support, uh, ability to be able to do HTML hosting, ability to be able to send um, packets uh, over the internet and um, it's also a quite powerful processor um, with m two cores and uh, two SPI interfaces. So that's basically what, it, what um, I'd recommend. And that's actually what I'm gonna demonstrate here today. So with, uh, with that, let me just talk a little bit about um, uh, what we got going on here. So if you look at the, the logging here, we're basically all, all reset my ESP32 and turn scrolling off. So if um, we go back up and look at this, basically this is the, this top part up here is the, uh, the basically the, the radio in initialization of the um, NRF 24L01 plus um, and um, and then uh, the first uh, set of data here is basically all of the uh, setup data that you're capable of, of uh, programming into the um, into the system. Basically, the amp hours, the over voltage protection, the low voltage protection, over current protection. Then this is positive over current protection, negative over current protection. Um, delay, that's basically the delay from an event or for, uh, for turning on the, to the, there's an external relay that this supports for disconnecting a load, and that's the delay in seconds. And there's some calibration uh, parameters here, too, um, that you can basically uh, calibrate, um, basically voltage errors, current errors, current offset, that sort of thing. Um, and then after that is the real-time data for... The current voltage, current current, current watts, um, the amp hours that have either gone into or out of your battery, watt hours, um, the time in seconds since since uh, power up, uh, the current temperature, and whether the uh, output relay is on or, or not, um, and then um, let me go on to the. Um, okay, we'll talk about the software a little bit here. Um, so basically, um, the pin assignments are in here for so basically for wiring up the the pin assignments are in here for so basically for wiring up the uh, the uh, NRF twenty four L O one plus um, in here for different configurations for the Uno and the ESP thirty two, and then. Um, these are important. These address and frequency. Those are the um, the the address that shows up on the top of the Gentech controller. 
So in this case, the address uh, and frequency was A27. So um, keep this, change this to whatever your, uh, whatever frequency and whatever address your your particular unit is configured for. And it is case sensitive, so make sure the frequency is the capital, uh, capital character. Um, other than that, I'm not going to go into a great uh, deal of detail. Um, there's basically, um, this is basically just a very simple logger only. And um, it, it tries to handle uh, all the different error cases. Um, it's actually was taken from, I think, uh, the uh, um, sample files, example files for the uh, RF24 um, getting started with error handling, I think is, is what I use for a start. Um, but basically there's three packets here um, that the uh, um, TX payloads that get sent for different conditions. There's, there, there's the initial one for getting reading back the setup hardware. There's another one for reading back the real-time uh, real data. And there's yet another one, which is a special case for power recovery, power down the base. So um, other than that, what it, it uh, doesn't do is just logs, doesn't do anything, doesn't do graphing, doesn't have host an HTML page. Um, none of that. Those are um, things that I want to explore in the future. Um, and the other good point is it doesn't actually do any programming of the base unit. Um, so basically all the setup information in terms of the overvoltage, overcurrent, undervoltage, those, those sorts of things, those all, um, as of right now, are not included in this. Um, it's just purely a data logger. So with that being said, um, let me just talk a little bit about the um, uh, how I went about um, doing all this. Um, I use this uh, logic analyzer that's available from uh, off from Amazon for uh, twelve bucks. So it's a uh, um, a high let go USB logic analyzer, and it's actually quite powerful. Um, I was very pleased. Actually, the, the software behind it, this Pulse View, which is open source, basically allows you to be able to um, grab. Here, I'm grabbing 50 million samples, um, which is incredible. At, at that's the fastest clock rate, uh, 24 megahertz. Um, but um, it actually has the not only the decode for the spy, it actually has, it actually has code in there for decoding the uh, NRF 24L01 data as well. So you can actually see all the commands, um, all the payloads that come across. Um, if you look at one of this, the TX payload here, it's getting sent across. Um, I had to modify it so that this was coming across as printable characters. If it could print them, I changed it to all hex um, because there are no real printable characters that come across on this um, this uh, VAT 1300. But anyway, um, very powerful um, chunk of, of um, um, very powerful debugging tool. And um, basically you see all the commands and stuff that get sent across. So it's actually very quite nice. And um, what else did I want to cover? I think that's about, uh, about it um, from there. So let's talk about the um, what I do have going on here. If you look at the um, turn off the light so you can see it a little bit better. This is actually kind of a next step, but just to give you an idea of what can be done with this. This this is a um, uh, 128 by 128 1.5 inch uh, OLED display that um, hooks up the SPI interface. So right now I've got on the separate SPI interface on the uh, ESP32, but there's no reason it can't be on a common SPI interface. Just use a different slave select um, between the, the uh, radio and the LCD. Um, but um, I'm not doing anything very sophisticated at the moment. Um, 
the actually actually the red and the green data there, the the current and the battery percentage are just um, uh, just statically there. I'm not actually displaying any real time data, but the the voltage I am, and if I toggle the voltage, you can see the the um, this is meant to be the top line for the maximum voltage, the bottom line for the minimum voltage, and then this is the the uh, real time voltage. But if you see, if I step step the the voltage coming in, you can see I am in fact able to uh, graphically display that real time. But the intent was is to set maybe set this up so um, I have some sort of graphics display for real time data like this. Um, uh, look at an entire day's worth, entire week's worth, and also set that up so it's available on a HTML page um, as well. So exactly how I'm going to go about doing that, I'm not sure. Um, um, I know some more sophisticated like Raspberry Pi setups and things like that, you can actually set up a database, but um, um, like an SQL uh, database, I'm not sure if that's possible or an Arduino or not, so maybe just have to uh, hard code in all of the uh, uh, database for logging all that information but um, anyway that's basically the setup as I said the code is on uh, on uh, github and uh, um, if uh, if somebody's interested in being a collaborator I'm not a software engineer so um, you know the the um, it's not my forte I'm a hardware engineer so um, anybody that would like to uh, take the code and enhance it from here, that's the whole point. Um, and uh, that's basically um, that's basically all I have for now. And uh, may or may not have a follow-on video with um, a more detailed implementation, um, uh, both in terms of actually installing it on the boat and um, setting up um, the web server and and you know, graphical user interface and that sort of thing. So anyway, I hope, hope this is uh, useful. Thank you very much.